So this poem is called A Recipe for Making a Goosey Stew and Pounded Jam, English edition. My father is in the living room. A goosey stew is wafting in from the kitchen whilst he's practicing for his English exam. He speaks three languages, all three almost fluent, but what he worries about is never being good enough for English. Whether his sounds will be drowned out by mispronunciation of words that do not exist in Yoruba. He lies in debt to a language that ridicules him for saying words exactly how it's spelled. Half the time he spends correcting himself, trying to make his tongue more accommodating, creating shelves in the ribs that lie in the roof of his mouth. Unintentionally, he begins by swishing palm oil in the frames of his cheeks. He grinds melon seeds and onions between his molars. He sprinkles the seeds of scotch bonnet in his esophagus, trying to burn out and root this other life. There are bitter leaves growing between the dented lines that grace his cheekbones. They have even started to grow in between the spaces as eyelashes lay and his tear duct screams in fury. And sometimes he calls me from work, wanting my reassurance that he spelt phrases right. My father was born with drums to hums to yam being pounded in open kitchens. Pestle and mortar knocking in sync. He grew up with a tonal language and so much more than what English reduces him to. Once or twice, his stews and frustration warped between the locust beans and the pumpkin leaves. And I'm watching him do it now as my mother walks out of the kitchen carrying his food for the night on the tray. English has been taken to the fridge to cool. She sets it down on his knees. He washes his hands in this little bowl of water he asks my sister to bring. And my mother returns to the kitchen, opens the fridge to a rotten smell. It happens every time. Last time it was the fried stew in the ice cream tub. Before that, the spinach sauce. This time it was grandma's herbal concoction the one thing that can only be soured by time. English corrupts everything it touches, but never the milk. And how do I tell him this? When he has dreams folded in between English's laps, clutched in the Oxford Dictionary. Instead, I chose to keep silent as he takes the pounded yam into the agusi stew and presses it to his lips, watching him get lost in this masterpiece that is so much more worthier for his tongue.